14 is finally available to all of us. The main reason I decided to bite the bullet and download iOS 14 and not wait for a newer release is just because I wanted to try it. I wanted to hop on the bandwagon as soon as I could because I've been watching other YouTubers like Marquis Brownlee, iJustine, who are in the beta, and I just really was amped up for a lot of the features that it has to offer. But saying that, I did wait a little bit, which is why this video is a little bit delayed compared to a lot of the other iOS 14 videos that are out there right now. And the main reason for that is I was really on the fence. I usually don't install the first version of an iOS straight away. I usually wait until something is out or I know a little bit more about the bugs just so I can protect my phone because I use it constantly and I have to use it for work. The first thing I want to talk about are widgets. This is the one thing that has been compared so heavily to Android's operating system and I'm glad it finally came over to iOS because it's given me a whole different way to customize my home screen, declutter things, and also add a little bit of customization to my everyday use. So this is all about widgets. As you can see, my home screen is pretty customized. I set it up exactly how I want it, but I'll give you guys first a breakdown of what widgets are and what you do with them. So first I'm just going to slide over to this blank screen, so if you do a long hold. Over here you have the plus sign, hit that, and then from here you can start choosing the widgets that you like. And if you scroll all the way down, you can see a bunch of different apps, shortcuts, and you just add these to your main screen. So if I wanted to add, let's see, something for like screen time, a widget for screen time, and then you go in here and there's different options that you can choose as well. So it's usually by like the small or like the medium or the large widget and for this if I want to just do the small add widget and then it comes up over here all nice and you can still move it around if you want customize it that way so that's the main usage of widgets if I go back into my widgets here another awesome thing that you can do is called smart stack so this is where you have multiple widgets on top of each other so just for being able to see really clearly I'll add this smart stack if you long hold on any smart stack or any widget you can also do what's called edit stack and then from here you can go through and you can delete certain widgets that you don't want to show up like maps I don't want you um, Siri suggestions I don't need you and then and Todoist I don't need you so you get rid of them that way and then what's really cool is you have this what's really cool is you have this main widget now and you can scroll through just like this there you go and you can see multiple widgets all at once and this is something that I did over here So smart stack is really what I took advantage of over here and all these little cutesy little photos are actually all smart stacked widgets so I'll show you guys in a second. But that's the main gist of widgets. The reason Interesting widgets I feel like I now need to talk about app library. App library isn't something I think I'm going to be using that much but it's still a really nice feature to have. So if you go on your home screen and you scroll all the way to the right you see what's called your app library. And what this basically is, it's already all organized for you. All of your apps are organized into these different little folders. And you can even see like recently added, you can see suggestions. And you can also go up here and you can search. So if I wanted to search for time hop, it's right there. I think that's pretty cool. Um, like I said, I don't think I'm using it that much, but just in case you find it interesting, I thought it was kind of cool, that's why I'm introducing it, even though I'm probably not going to use it. The next feature I want to talk about is picture in picture. I'm mad stoked that this has come. Only downside right now, as of recording this, it's September 20th, YouTube still doesn't have the capability to do picture in picture, but I did see one workaround that if you go to Safari, you can actually do picture in picture from there for pretty much any video you want to watch. So let's jump into picture in picture just a bit. So picture in picture could be used in a variety of settings. You could use it while you're watching videos or 
You could also use it while you're FaceTiming people, which is gonna be really helpful for me. I live abroad, I'm an expat. So FaceTiming is like my form of communication and connecting with any friends and family back home. And one of the most annoying things that I had was when I was video chatting them, and I'm like, oh, I wanna talk about, I don't know, this one news article, let me pull up the news article, but anytime I'd pull up any other application, my picture and everything was blacked out and I couldn't see them either. So I'm gonna do something a little innovative. I'm gonna grab my iPad. I'm gonna try to call myself on there and do picture in picture to show you guys what it looks like. All right, this is gonna be super interesting trying to do it alone, but you know what? You gotta work with what you got. So I am currently screen recording on here. Hi guys, that's you over there. And we have picture in picture going on right now. So basically you just have to swipe up and when you swipe up, it'll throw out picture in picture. For some other applications, you do kind of press a little setting button to do it. But the really cool thing is that you can move this around on the screen. So say I wanna pull up, I don't know, Reddit. But oh no, you're in the bottom. I wanna bring you up to the top so I can actually go through and scroll and read. Also, welcome guys, you can see all of my subreddits that I subscribe to. Anyway, so that's one usage for it. And also, if you're doing stuff on your phone and you want to get rid of the picture just really quickly, you can just swipe it right over. It does show as paused, but that's one way that you can do it. Um, but yeah, just having the ability to kind of move it around is pretty awesome. The next thing I want to talk about isn't really a feature per se. It's a part of accessibility, but I still find it super useful, so I want to share it with you guys as well too, and that's back tab. So most people won't have this on by default, so I'm gonna show you guys quickly how to turn this on. So you go over into your settings, scroll down to accessibility, and then physical and motor, and then click on touch, and then scroll all the way to the bottom to back tap. So you have two choices, you can do double tap and triple tap, and then you can set actions for what those taps will then trigger. So there's a lot of things. Some people do it for taking screenshots. Some people do it, I use it actually as a shortcut. So I have back tap tied to a shortcut that I use to message one of my friends who I message pretty frequently. Um, I saw the screenshot one, I thought it was pretty cool. So I'm gonna share it with you guys. So right now I have triple tap, we'll take a screenshot. So. Let's just go over here. So I'm just gonna go over to this main page and take a quick screenshot by triple tapping. That is so rad! This is actually the first time I've used it to take a screenshot. I could see how double tap might be a little bit easier for that, but I would rather just be able to message my friend more quickly. But wow, hold on, I, got, I gotta do it again. I gotta do it again. I'll show you guys what this looks like. Oh my god, that's so cool! That's pretty much all that that is. It's a pretty cool feature. I'm gonna use it. It's also really great to think of all the things that Apple thinks about when they're creating their iOS or updating their iOS to make it easier for accessibility uh, customers as well. I, that's one of the reasons I absolutely love Apple. Next up that I want to talk about is minimal call interface and it's something that I've noticed the first day when I started using the new iOS and it has been so great. I hated every time I would get a call but I was using my phone, it would just pop up on the screen and be so obnoxious and big and loud and I'm just like, why are you calling me anyway? Just text me. But for real, the new minimal call feature has been so awesome and I'll show you guys quickly how it works on here. Again, I gotta call myself because I don't have anybody on standby to call me. So let's see and hope this works. For posterity's sake, I just wanted to show you guys what the phone looks like if you're getting a call and you're using your phone otherwise. So I'm just gonna call myself right here. So there you go. It shows up right on top and you can either decline or accept right from here. This was just a quick rundown of the five features that I'm really digging about the new iOS. Definitely into that double tap, widgets, shortcuts, I never used to be a big shortcut fan. I didn't find a use for it, but now with the new OS, I do. So comment down below because I would love, love, love to hear how you guys are using the new OS, what you're using for widgets, what apps you notice are working really well with widgets. So yeah, 
If you want to geek out with me, definitely go in the comments down below. Hit subscribe because I'm all about that tech life. I love researching this stuff. I've been researching the new iOS 14 for days now, or months, I guess, if you consider beta. So yeah, just be a part of the community. Come hang out with me. We're all bored here. Like, there's nothing to do in quarantine. So, and I'll leave my socials also down below if you want to go reach out to me on there instead. Totally open. So, see you guys in the next one. The bullet and download IS14. IS14? Part of. I need to stop saying OS. What is it? I don't know. I should know. I don't.